Hey guys, this is Martin Perdomo, the lead strategist, and you're listening to and or watching Latinos in Real Estate Investing podcast, and I'm really, really, really appreciate you guys being here with me and sharing your time with me. Before I get started, if you don't mind just giving us a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel, I really would appreciate that, it would really help with the algorithms. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Fed's increasing the interest rates by half of a percent this week and the impact it will have on us. And before I even share that with you, I want to share an article here that uh, I just came across and the, on the MLS. And, and this article says here, of housing affordability raises towards not seen since 2006 bubble. I mean, the, the crisis is, this affordability crisis is, is absolutely insane. It says, with soaring home prices and mortgage rates pushing affordability to levels not seen since 2006 housing bubble, borrowers are increasingly turning to adjustable rate mortgages or, or paying points to buy down their interest rates. According to the number the numbers released Monday by mortgage data and technology provided by Black Knight. This means guys that people are now because the interest rates are going up, now people are starting to turn to adjustable rate mortgages. This is not by the way, this is not a good time to be buying adjustable rate mortgages. As I record this is the 7th of May and the feds on 2 days ago, 3 days ago uh, increased the interest rates by 0.5%, so 50 basis points. They increase the interest rates by half of a percent. And in real estate, we have the 1% rule. The 1% rule is that for every 1% that, that the interest rate goes up, we lose 10% in value. Because what happens is affordability becomes a problem, right? Because people are buying, they, they got to qualify for these mortgages. So they qualify based on their income. So if their income is fixed but the interest rates are going up that means that their affordability for the payment they can not afford the same house that they would have been able to afford a year ago when it was uh let's say three hundred thousand and this year is three hundred and forty thousand they can not afford that same exact house because now they have to pay a higher interest rates and higher interest rates automatically kicks them out to qualify based on income for that loan. So what happens is sellers now to sell their houses have to bring down the prices so that people can get mortgages and qualify for the mortgages based on the new interest rates to buy these houses. In, in last month's Mortgage Monitor report, Black Knight warned that if mortgage rates rise by another half a percentage point or if home prices go up another 5%, affordability will hit the worst levels on record. I think we're there already, guys. About one third of housing markets are already there. The best measure of affordability is the payment to income ratio, the share of medium income, a home buyer putting 20% down on the average price home needs to set aside market their uh, monthly mortgage payments. In July 2006, on the eve of the housing crash, 2007, 2009 recession, national payment to income ratio hit an all time high of 34.1%. If you're looking at history, right, and you're trying to predict the future, because history has a way of repeating itself, and we have to look at this data and learn and, and know how to analyze it and try to anticipate. With home prices up 19.9% from a year ago in March and mortgage rates well above 5%, the payment to income ratio now hit 32.5% as of April 21st, Black Knight said. 34.1% was the, the all-time high. Right now we're at 32.5%. And I think in many markets we're probably there. In the kitchen table terms, the average mortgage payment is up 38% this year alone to 1884. 72% increase from the start of the pandemic, said Black Knight Data and Analytics President Ben Gabosk in a statement. Now let me get back to you here. This is the impact that interest rates have on affordability. What do I see? So there's a couple of things still going on here. So interest rates are going up, meaning affordability is going down. Things, markets that are gonna be strong, areas in the real estate market that are gonna be strong. So um, if you're buying and holding, you're still gonna, <laughs> rents are gonna continue to go up in my opinion, because of full people are getting priced out of buying houses. So as for us, we're, uh, my flipping business, we have to start being very, very careful as redevelopers, 
So, so rents are going to continue to go up, in my opinion, because during recessionary period, during difficult times, right, when affordability is low, people are going to have a few choices. Hey, if I move, I'm going to move. If you're renting and they're going to move, they're going to move to something higher because there's there's no inventory. Their best bet is to stay. If people are not buying houses because they can't afford it, so then what's going to happen is it's going to increase demand for rent. People are going to want to rent more. They're going to want to renew their leases, so they're going to want to go into a, into a new place. Therefore, the landlords are going to increase the rent, and rents are going to continue to go up. I am predicting that we're going to see a slowdown, not a crash. I don't think we're going to see a crash. And the reason I say that is because we are at still at all-time low levels of inventory in the market. There's very, very little inventory. I can share, for instance, with uh, one of the markets I'm really familiar with, a normal market in, in one of the markets we play in, it's 3,000 units in a normal market. And as of this morning, I looked at the data, there was 583 uh, properties on the market, active listings. There's still no inventory. So because of, of simple supply and demand, people are still going to be buying houses. But this article also goes on to say, as I said earlier, let me show it, let me share it with you. Let me go to this article here. This article also goes on to say that to cope with rising interest rates and growing proportion of borrowers returning to adjustable rate mortgage loans or paying points to get a lower rate. So what does that mean? That means that, means that people are, instead of going with a 30-year fix, they're going with a five or a three-year arm and a two, or, you know, or a two-year arm. Those were, the, those were the loans I used to sell. And I tell you, it is the worst time to buy. If you are listening to this and you're going to buy a home, my advice to you is do not get a 30-year fixed mortgage. Again, this is not financial advice. This is what I would do. If I was going to buy a house in today's market, I would not be buying an arm. And the way the arms, the, the, the adjustable rate mortgages work is they're good for a set period of time. It's usually between three to seven years, depending on the type of loan that you're going to go with. Then what happens is they readjust to prime plus whatever you negotiate with the bank. And, and that locks it in for, depending on the terms, another year. That is a very risky play right now because the feds have already committed that they're going to raise the interest rates no more than 50 basis points. So that was good in a single time, but that they will be raising the interest rates a few more times this year in 2022. So we have to be paying really close attention to this. And this is why this is not a wise move if you're buying a house to get into a more a fixed mortgage rate. Now, usually in commercial, when you're buying commercial with an LLC, most of the loans out there, they're usually fixed for a certain amount of time. There are some products now for commercial that you can get a 30 year loan. If, for instance, we had our portfolio here, we had a group of properties that we had on, our, on, on arms and we refied those into a section of our portfolio was uh, arm loans and we've recently refied those into 30 year fix. And the reason we did that is because we are looking to weather the storm of whatever is coming. We know, hey, the, the feds are telling us that they're going to raise interest rates. They're telling us we believe them. Our job is to stay informed and play the game. I'm gonna leave you with this. Remember, he who has the money makes the rules. So our jobs as investors, right, or, or as consumers, wealth creators, if you want to create wealth, you have to learn to speak this language. You have to be in tune in what's happening with the monetary policies. The monetary policies affect everything across the board. Now, the reason that the feds are looking to raise interest rates is one of the levers that they have to control inflation. Inflation is out of control right now, as we all know, right? Around the globe, especially here in the country, Inflation is just out of whack. And so they use this lever to control the, how much money being used out in the marketplace. We, as Americans, are addicted to cheap money. We have been addicted to cheap money. I was talking to someone the other day and they were saying, wow, the interest rates are, are now 5%. And I'm saying, dude, my first investment, and I was the mortgage broker, guys. I was a mortgage guy, so I gave myself the absolute best rate. My first duplex, I paid in 2007, I think it was a 7.75% interest rate, and we were killing it, right? And that was amazing and at that time. That was like the best, absolute best rate I could get, and I had like a 740 credit score, right? I didn't know what I know today, but my point is that 
these rates are still pretty low. However, when you add increasing interest rates, increasing housing prices, so now we have a, a combo, a, a one-two punch, and then we have increasing everything else, the cost of food, the cost of gas, everything else is through the roof. The other day I was going to one of my properties and I just happened to look up at one of the gas station signs on the highway and I saw that diesel fuel, six dollars and like 70 cents per gallon for diesel fuel. And I can only think those uh, owner operator, uh, small business truck drivers, they're getting crushed right now with gas. So, so if gas goes up and the transportation, the cost to transport our food to the supermarket goes up, then that has to go up. It's just everything is up. You, we all know this, everything is, is rising up and the feds are trying to control inflation by raising the interest rates. When they raise the interest rates, prices has to go, have to go down because now businesses and people are borrowing less, so the influx of money in the streets is less. But man, there's some side effects to that mode. Anyways, these are my thoughts. I think that 2022 right. is going to be, be a, it's gonna level off that. I think that single family is gonna level off and simply because of interest rates. I don't think we're gonna see a crash. I think we're gonna see a, a flat line. This year It's not gonna be like last year. And um, I think that rents are going to continue to rise. Rent, uh, the rental market does really well during recessionary periods because when people are, are losing their homes or, 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 or bad times, they go to rent. So I think that, that the rental market, the rental section is going to do really well. I also do believe though, that there might be some opportunities in the, in the rental market to purchase some properties because of what I said with the commercial loans, most commercial loans are arms, are, are adjustable rate mortgages, and some of those might be coming due here in the next couple of years, many of them will, right, in the next couple of years, and when those rates go up, that's gonna force those sellers either A, to refinance those properties, or B, sell them, but they're gonna have to sell them at a lower price because now, if I'm buying that property and the interest rates have gone up, then they have to lower the price so that that deal and that property makes sense for me to buy so I can cash flow. A smart investor is not gonna buy a property just for appreciation. You should be buying a property for both appreciation and cash flow, right? A, a, a smart investor is not gonna buy a property just and, and lose and be in negative cash flow every month, right? And because the interest rates is going up, that means that the debt service ratio, the debt service coverage is gonna be more expensive, money is gonna be more expensive. So those sellers that have these multifamilies, right, or these rentals on their commercial loans, they're gonna to have to sell them at a lower price so that it makes sense and that the new buyer can have some cash flow. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, thank you for listening. If you appreciate this content and you thought this was valuable, leave us a thumbs up. Let's discuss it in the comments. Tell me what you think, tell me what you see, tell me if you think what I said makes sense, feels right, looks good, or sounds good. Thank you guys, appreciate you. Peace out, see you soon.